loving and gracious God, stir in our hearts the words that each one of us needs to hear. Heal us in your love and grace. Stir in our hearts the memories that will make us whole. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. On this day, six years ago, and maybe it was one year ago or ten years ago, but the photo has popped up on my phone. And it might be my daughters when they were little girls or the lake in Minnesota at sunset, or the delicious apple pie my husband made last Thanksgiving. And for that moment, I am transported back in time, and I remember the laughter at that birthday party and the joy I felt. I remember feeling the awe as the sky turned violent, violet, and the sun sank below the horizon of the lake and the awe. And I remember the smell of baked apples and taste sugar sprinkled on the crust. Facebook seems to know the pictures that will make me smile. And it is smart of them. Brain science tells us that savoring positive memories changes us. It can instantly boost our happiness, ease our stress, and when we make a practice of remembering good experiences, they can help us through difficult times in the future. There is strength to be gained from remembering the goodness of the past. Do this in remembrance of me. The words of institution. We don't have any trouble remembering them because we say them every time we gather at the table. But the Apostle Paul writes these words in the letter to the church in Corinth because they had forgotten what it meant to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Sometimes it's good to hear stories of others' forgetfulness, to know that we can be forgiven in our forgetfulness. But what was happening at the church in Corinth was the Lord's Supper was an event. It was not a simple meal of bread and juice, bread and wine. It was the occasion for a banquet and lots and lots of wine. What scholars think was happening is that the church meant and met in one of the homes of a wealthy family because their house was big enough to host the whole church. But what would, they were doing was inviting their wealthy friends to come first to the feast, eat all the food, drink up all the wine, so that when the regular folk came, they were drunk and there was no food left. And Paul was, well, appalled. You have forgotten what the Lord's Supper is about. It is about love and sacrifice and community. We gather to remember Jesus' love that got him killed. We gather to remember that Jesus died to bring people together, rich and poor, together, slave and free, together, saint and sinner, together. But you, my Corinthian friends, you're, you're tearing your community apart. Stop this, Paul says to them. Remember. Remember, 
Jesus said, do this to remember me. You are Jesus' disciples now. Remember, you are the body of Christ. Now, remembering in the Bible is more than recalling things from the past. Remembering in the Bible is about experiencing again those things that our ancestors experienced. It's about imagination. It is about stepping into the ancient story so that we embody the story and the spirit so our whole lives are remembrance of Jesus' love and sacrifice and community. So we see that picture in the mind's eye of the love that reached out to touch the untouchables, the love that heals. We step into that story. So today, we, when we come to the table, we remember how Jesus healed people, and we come with the hope that we can be healers too, that we might be healed. And we come to the table, we remember how Jesus ate with the wrong sort of people, sinners, Pharisees enemies so that we can remember and live in the hope that if we see ourselves as the wrong sort of person to be at the table with Jesus there is no wrong sort of person with Jesus Jesus will truly eat with anyone and love them maybe we come with the hope that we can be made strong. Maybe we think we are the sinners or we know we are sometimes the Pharisees or we want to know how to sit at the table and love our enemies. Jesus invited everyone who was tired tired of bad news or injustice or things too hard just tired. He invited them to come so that they could rest. Come, taste grace, savor that rest, that grace. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, coming together, sharing the meal with Jesus, with the real spiritual presence of Christ. We reenact the story of God's love so that when we leave here, we can be the people of love in the world. We savor that moment. The practice of remembering is integral to our faith. Sometimes God has to be reminded. Do you remember the great flood? How God became so angry and disappointed with humanity that God just sent a flood and wiped the earth clean to start over again? But afterwards, God was sad that God had done this. So God put a rainbow in the sky, not to remind us, but to remind God's self of the promise that God made, the covenant, that no matter how angry or disappointed or sad God became with humanity, God had set up God's bow in the sky, God had promised and would keep the covenant that God would stick with humanity no matter what. It's interesting to think that God has
us to be reminded. The prophets call God's people to remember God's covenant and to follow God's commandments, and that's when the rainbow can be a sign of remembering for us. And if you look at the resurrection window, you turn around, it's okay. There is Jesus standing in front of the rainbow. That sign of covenant love and peace. The entire Passover feast is a reenactment of the Exodus story so that people will remember that God heard the cries of the Hebrew slaves and their suffering, and God sent Moses to lead them to freedom. The psalmist recounts this over and over and over again in the book of Psalms, what God has done in the past since God heard the cries of the Hebrew slaves. That's who God is. God is one who hears our suffering. Remember and hope. Remember that God freed the slaves, and that is who God is. For all who long for freedom, hope in the Lord. All throughout scripture, we are commanded to remember the good things that God has done. So that when we see life, and our children or grandchildren or the child playing across the street, we will remember and savor those moments of joy. When we remember the sunset, we will remember the awe of God's creation. When we see the apple pie, we remember that God feeds the hungry. We savor that moment so it can change our lives. Today, I ask you, what pictures come to your mind when you remember what God has done in your life? What people come to mind when you consider the work of love in your life? Who planted those seeds of faith inside of you? It doesn't have to be 50 years ago. Who has touched your faith, planted a seed of love, When I thought about the people who came to mind, I picture the Reverend Frank Guthrie. I was five or six years old and in church with my mom and Reverend Guthrie, tall as he was, would come and put a knee on the floor so he could see me face to face and tell me about God. I had put a, a little note in that he had a box, a shoe box with a, with a slit in the lid where kids could put their, their questions and, and that he would answer during the time with children. He would pull one out and, and answer it during the time with children, which would be a, a great challenge for us <laughs> pastors. And, and I asked Reverend Guthrie, how it was that God could be both on earth and the heaven at the same time. He got down on a knee because I had missed the Sunday where he answered that in the time with children. So he got down on his knee and he told me that maybe it was like the moon and a meteor. And, you know, for a five-year-old, that worked. I remember that moment of love. I experience his love that 
he thought I mattered. I picture Reverend Rollin Moseson, and all, I remember him standing in the pulpit of the church where I grew up, and I love to listen to his sermons. I don't remember anything about them except that they made me feel like I had been in the presence of love. And one of the things that he did every time before he preached, he said a prayer and he ended that prayer with, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I say it every Sunday, so I remember. I have a picture of an elderly woman. I can't remember her name. <laughs> we sat together many afternoons the summer I worked as a volunteer in mission at a church in New York City. It was a difficult summer. I would go over to her house or her apartment and uh, it was my job to just keep her company, but she was wonderful. And it was kind of a little bit of a relief to go over and be with her. We watched movies, she drank scotch. She watered down scotch for me. There we were, watching old movies, drinking scotch. I remember. That it was good just to be together. It was a great sharing of the love of the Lord. So who do you see? What pictures come to mind? You may want to close your eyes and just for a moment and a little bit of silence, see your Frank Guthrie or Roland Moseson or Name the person or people you see in your heart or out loud or in a whisper. As you remember these people who planted the seeds of faith, can you connect the dots? in your life? Can you see how God has been with you in the past? Can you remember? God is with us. And all our days past and with us now and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Let us be strengthened in our remembering. Let us be strengthened as we remember the goodness that God has shown us. Let us be strengthened in savoring that love and grace so that we may truly live a future with hope. Amen.